right. Well, first of all, I just want to say a really huge thank you to all of you for coming. We know that you're pretty knackered after a big day in the workplace, whether it be school, college, TAFE, or other workplaces um, that you're in. So we know it's an extra special effort when you come along to these um, union events, but you know also that we wouldn't ask you to come along if it wasn't important. And today really is important, and you'll understand why uh, in the next sort of 45 minutes. So essentially what we're going to talk about today, because um, many of you were unable to come to the rally that was held at lunchtime in Hobart, which was super successful. You can see the photos back here. It was amazing. And I was just saying to a couple of the staff, I feel like I've got rally withdrawal symptoms. It was just such a good thing. We're on such a high. We reckon there were over 1,500 people that came along to that rally. Um, and in addition to that, you can see the apples. So how many people had the opportunity to sign a sticker in your workplaces? Lots of you, great. Well, this is, this is where they ended up. They ended up there, nearly 2,000 of the damn things we had to cut out on your behalf. <laughs> but that's great because that showed that nearly 2,000 people that were AEU members uh, were thinking of people at the rally, wanted to be at the rally and stood in solidarity with the people that were at the rally today. So that was really powerful, powerful visual message that you guys delivered on behalf of the AU today. So thank you very much. So what we're going to do today is um, talk about topical issues of the proposed wage freeze, not a wage pause, and what that means for you. And we're also going to talk very briefly about the anti-protest legislation. We've actually had some good news there, thank goodness. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get into the details of, of both of those issues, it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to the President of the Australian Council of Trade Unions, the ACTU, um, Jed Carney here. Um, and for people that don't know Jed, um, she was a nurse in her previous life and head of the ANF, now called the ANMF, which is a shock and mouthful, but, <laughs> but that's the Nurses' Union. Um, and so Jed's a really great supporter of us here in Tasmania and comes down from time to time. And so she was our keynote speaker at the rally today. And she thought um, that because so many AU members were going to miss out, that she would do a special, <laughs> special spot for you here today and talk about what's happening around the country um, and, and why what's happening in Tassie really isn't new, but, but why we have to be strong and on the front foot. So, Jed, I'd like to welcome you Thank to you. our group. Very much everyone and I do want to thank you so much for coming out after a long day's work. I have two of my daughters are teachers and I know exactly how hard it is and what a hard job it is. So thanks again for coming out to listen and I've had a fantastic day. It's been really wonderful. The rally was wonderful and if you weren't there, if you could have seen Roz, she was the star and it's been absolutely <laughs> She was so angry and she got everybody there so riled up and it was exactly what we needed. It was fantastic. Because if you think about what's happening in Tassie, it's really part of a, a big attack that is happening right across Australia from very conservative, ideologically driven governments. Um, I'll start, I think, at, at what's happening federally, if you, if you haven't been aware, I'm sure you really are aware. But, you know, for a hundred years or more, unions in Australia have been working really hard and really successfully at building a very decent society in this country. It's thanks to unions that we have aged care pensions. It's thanks to unions that we have unemployment benefits. It's thanks to unions that we have uh, welfare payments for people with disabilities or who are down on their luck. It's thanks to unions that we have a superannuation system. It's thanks to unions that we have fought so hard for and have kept a very decent, well-staffed quality public education system. It's thanks to unions that we have fought really, really hard to have a decent, uh, well, health system in this country that is comparable, really, with nothing in the world. I mean, Medicare is world-class health system where everybody has access to health care. It's thanks to unions, you know, that we have a say, that we have democratic society and that we have decent workplace laws where we can meet like this and actually bargain and make sure that workers in this country have a better life. And I really mean that when I say that. It's thanks to unions that we have all those things. And what's happening right now is that we are facing the biggest attack that we have ever faced <coughs> on every single decent piece of social infrastructure we have put in place in this country over the last hundred years. And we are facing it 
from this Liberal government at a federal level who in one foul swoop has decided to just attack it all. It's unbelievable. I mean, I've got to say that even I was taken by surprise by the severity and the, the, the rapidity, or the, the quickness, what's the word? The suddenness of the attack. Because if you think even John Howard, who was probably just as ideologically driven, really, you know, he took his time, he gathered in the Aussie battlers, he sort of, you know, sort of moulded everyone before he went in and jumped on us. And even then, he didn't attack the social compact, he didn't attack the welfare system. He didn't attack health and education. He attacked our workplace rights. And he paid for it, as you know, back in 2007. So what Tony Abbott is doing, and I'm sad to say that your Senator Erica Betts is one of the biggest proponents of this, is absolutely attacking everything. So the last budget that came down, I'm sure you all know exactly what was in the budget and I don't have to tell you, attacking tertiary education. You know, you know, Students will come out, if Pine gets his reforms up, students will come out of university with a debt equal to a mortgage. 200, if you're a nurse, you're looking at $250,000 to train to be a nurse. That is the debt that you will pay back. Not only will you accrue that debt, but you'll start paying interest sooner, and it's just, it's diabolical. We will have an elite university system, we'll have a two-tier system where the top universities will be, you know, rich and whatever, and you'll have a poor universities, I'm sad to say, in the regional areas. Christopher Pine doesn't think that's a problem because it's about time we weeded out all those poor people from going to expensive universities. They should be, you know, out doing trades and things like that. This is what they think. That they're, you know, it's just extraordinary how they think. So they're attacking, they've cut $80 billion, $80 billion from the state's health and education budget, $80 billion. Now, we all know that's about raising the GST, but oh, I, will, I won't even go there right now because that is really a story for another day, but that's really what it's about. They want to force the states into raising GST by cutting the state funding. Uh, they've attacked welfare payments. You know all about under 30, what happens to you if you're unemployed and under 30? You get no welfare payments, none, for six months. You're expected to live on nothing. Uh, it's called this earn or learn business, right? Then you can get work for the doll programs. You go out and work for the doll for six months. If you still don't have a job after the work for the doll program, then you go back on nothing. No payments. Now, I don't know about you, but I know an awful lot of 30-year-olds that have families that pay rent, that have kids. You know, there's a lot of 30-year-olds or under 30-year-olds out there that actually have to live and don't have the benefit of staying at home with their parents. It's just this weird mentality. Um, you know, there's so much more. I'm sure you've all heard about the severity of these budget cuts and how awful they'll be. Cutting pensions. You know, they want to cut pensions really in real terms by about $200 a week is what will happen if these, budget, if these things go through. Medicare, oh my God. You know, $7 for a co to go to GP, right? It's not a lot of money, I know. And a lot of people say, well, you know, we pay anyway because not all doctors got a bill, whatever. It's not even $7 on the doctor's bill. It's $7 on your diagnostics and your blood test. It's $7 extra on your drugs that you get out, that you pick up from the PBS, from the chemist. It's $7 on any investigation that you have to have done. You know, that can work out to a lot of money if you're a family earning a very low minimum wage. Not only that though, it's not about revenue raising. It's not gonna raise a lot of money, that $7. What it is, it's about getting rid of the whole concept of universal health care. That's what it is. As soon as they turn going to the doctor into a point of sale transaction, universal health care is gone. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? That's what it's about. And that is an ideological attack on the entire concept of Medicare. We don't want that. We don't want it. Even if they said it was 50 cents, we don't want it. But sooner or later that 50 cents will grow, some people will have it, some people won't have it, and we will go down a US style of healthcare with the private health insurance companies. This is another thing, sorry, I didn't even finish a sentence because there's so much to tell you. Mm -hmm. that, that, that Dutton wants to do and he's started doing is he's gonna move the management of Medicare to the private health insurance sector. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can hear you groan, so you understand the ramifications of that really serious. Not only does it get rid of good public sector jobs and Medicare mums, as 
you know, we say a lot of women work in Medicare offices. It's actually shifting the whole thing into the private health insurance sector, and that is bad news. So these are, these attacks are enormous, you know, and I, I could go on and on and on about it. But if you overlay all of what's happening at the federal level from Tony Abbott, attacking what I call the social compact that we have with government, and you overlay that on what this government's proposing to do here in Tasmania, my goodness, I think it's a, what do they say, a perfect storm? So, you know, freezing public sector wages, which is actually cutting them, of course, you know that. It's not just freezing, it's cutting them. Cutting the size of the public service so small. You know, there are some people in the government here that think, or well, federally Liberal government as well, the only thing a government should provide is a defence force. That's all. Yeah, it's not up to us. I got asked on ABC Radio this morning, did anyone hear me on ABC Radio? You're probably all teaching, you poor things. So, I got asked by the interviewer, but Tony Chair, do you really think that it's a government's job to provide public sector jobs? Like, <laughs> what? I can't believe my ears. What is a government for if it's not to provide services? And you can't provide services without people. You've got to employ people to provide services. But this is slipping into the vernacular, you see. Oh, it's not government's job to provide services. No, 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 no. We shouldn't employ people. We've got to stop this. We've really got to stop it. Because if this is becoming all pervasive, it will seep right out across and people will start to believe it. No, it's not the government's job. You know, maybe freezing wages will create a few more jobs and, you know, maybe cutting the minimum wage. I haven't even started on the federal government's plans to attack workplace rights again. I mean, they are huge. To start with, they want to cut the minimum wage every year for 10 years the minimum wage you know they want to put an oversight in fact they're going to do this they don't need legislation to do this you know how we have the fair work commission they want to put in a court of appeal over and above the fair work commission so that any decisions they don't like that happens in the fair work commission their buddies they put in the in the court of appeal will just overturn it i have visions of sophie mirabella <laughs> <laughs> sitting in this court of appeal you know saying you we don't like those teachers they just got three percent pay rise no 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 we won't have that it's really a worry. You know, they're bringing back AWAs. You look, there's a bill before the Senate that it's got passed in the House of Representatives this week. It'll go to the Senate, and hopefully we're working on the pup senators to stop it. But it's basically bringing back AWAs. Remember AWAs in Work Choices? Bringing back what they call individual flexibility agreements, which we already have, but there's lots of protections around them. But they're just gonna take away all the protections so that you can, uh, for example, one of the things that means with an individual flexibility agreement, they can pay you in kind. So if you work in a pizza shop, they can pay you in pizzas. Oh. Seriously, seriously, I am not paying <laughs> So you know what? So look, I, do, I, I know I'm talking doom and gloom, but what I'm trying to do is make you really angry about this. Okay, we've got to get really angry because they are attacking our legacy, right? This is our stuff. We put this here. And this is our moment. No one else is going to fight for them unless the union movement really rises up like you did today out there at the rally. No one is going to fight for these except the union movement. And the government knows that. So part of their plan is to break the unions. That is part of their plan. They've got this bill before the Senate now called the Registered Orgs Bill. You know, you, Rose will know all about it. If that goes through, then basically we, we are really going to struggle. We are stuffed. Thanks, Rose. I wasn't going to use that. But yes, we are stuffed. Because they are trying to cripple us. Because they know that we are the ones that are going to get out there and fight like Billy O against this stuff that's happening. And we've got to do it. And my goodness, I'm so proud of Tasmania today for that rally. It was so wonderful. And they yelled their bloody lungs out to let the people in that parliament house know that we're not going to take this line down. This is an attack on everything. Remember that. Everything that makes this country good and civil and right. And we're going to lose it if we don't fight. So I'm so glad you've started the fight and I know that the rest of the country is up for it. I'm up for it. There's going to be a big campaign coming out of the ACTU in the next couple of months. I really hope you're on board. Thanks very much everyone. Yeah.